I am back in Jiayang. Technically, I'm here for New Year's, but you know I'm obviously also here to check on the state of luck and coffee in Tier 3. First, some context. I need to show you where this city is coming from. The Chaoshan region of China, where they speak Diosuawe, I mean, where they speak Chaoshanhua, or where they speak the Teochew dialect, is super unique. They've managed to preserve their traditions, culture, and language, while also being so business savvy in the rest of China that their reputation amongst most Chinese people is, ah, he's from Chaoshan, must have his own business. Come to think of it, they're kind of like the Jews of China. While you can clearly see the traditional nature of this village, it's also surrounded by modern. My girlfriend's grandma lives in one of these concrete single room houses, and her parents live in one of these tall buildings. Zoom out even further, and they've already got the same living communities that they have in the more developed areas of China. This place is just a hilarious combination of standardized, rule-based, modern China and Swabian, do-it-yourself, whatever-you-want, old-style China. But it's changing fast. No, I said it's changing fast, not show me your ass. Like, here's where they're building a xiaochu, a living community, kind of like this one. And here's where my girlfriend's dad has his... office? He calls it his office. I call it a fort. In this area, it used to be a trek to get to a small, mediocre shopping mall from this village. Now, they've got a brand new, massive... <clears throat> massive Wanda shopping mall within walking distance. I say walking distance because I would have walked it, but everyone else wanted to drive. Wanda treats this mall like it's a theme park. Wanda Guangchang Rang Shenghuo Geng Mei Hao. Wanda Plaza makes life even better. Wanda Plaza makes traffic even worse. It's kind of funny, this place is so traditional that it kind of has a separation from the bigger cities to the point where COVID has been close to non existent here. But because of the modernization, meaning larger crowds of people, this is the first time I've ever seen masks being enforced in this area. Before coming to the mall, I always thought of my trips here as like a COVID break. But this is just an obvious reminder. This mall has everything you'd expect from a modern, westernized shopping mall. Multi-layer parking, Starbucks, a luxury car display, an Apple authorized reseller, a Nayuki Pro, which just means that they serve mediocre coffee as well as their normal stuff, McDonald's, Dairy Queen, and a Neo store. But then you've got those reminders that you're not in Kansas, like the Sugarcane Juice Man, the Good Me store, the James store. Wait, that's not how you spell my name. Happy Unlimited. Poneng Dao Hu. Poneng Dao Hu. Poneng Dao Hu. Wait, I got this. Poneng Dao Hu. It wasn't very good. Whale Glad Tea, as well as our reason for coming here, Loga Mama. Oh, wait, no. Luckin' Coffee. As usual, this Luckin was far away from the Starbucks and the Nayuki that they have right at the front, undoubtedly for cheaper rent, but equally in a high traffic area. The interesting thing about this place is the fact that it's a franchise store. Seems like Luckin doesn't do any first party stores in tier 3 cities. It's up to the individuals to bring Luckin to their city. So I guess it's no surprise that it's here considering the Jew nature, I mean, the business nature of the Chaoshan people. It's okay. I'm Jewish. Ish. I'm like half Jewish. Doesn't that make me Jewish ish? Or does that just make me Jew ish? I'm like kind of a Jew. Jew ish. Never mind. Speaking of Jewish, a side note here. I bought a three-layer pan on Taobao, like the kind that's got stainless steel inside, aluminum middle, and copper outside. It was really good quality and not very expensive. It's made by a brand called Yo Tai. Jewish people have a really good reputation in China, and the Chinese for Jew is Yo Tai. So I was under the impression that this brand of pot was like coasting off the reputation of Jews. Turns out it's actually Yo Tai, or excellent wife. Wow. Lo Guess they opted for a different stereotype. Anyway, as I was saying, it's not really surprising that the Luckin franchise made it to this tier 3 city considering the business nature of the Chaoshan people. 
Luckin relies on these business adventure people to spread their brand the same way that that Lingy guy brought it to his tier 2 city. Oh, and another side note. That same guy, the one who told me that Luckin would be rapidly expanding, started his own coffee chain on top of his many Luckin stores. He's doing like a continuation of what Luckin's done. On the customer end, people get introduced to coffee via Luckin, and then they graduate to more specialty coffees at nice cafes. On the employee end, the workers at Luckin get experience working with customers and coffee, but the machines are automated and they don't get any real world coffee experience. So this guy started his own brand in which he's trying to create like a Chinese style coffee experience rather than copying the Western style. And for employees, he's taking selected baristas from his Luckin stores who want to move up and then training them to be real baristas. So now it's like he owns the whole coffee chain. When the customers inevitably graduate from industrial coffee and want to try something new, he has a chance to retain those customers. So while he's still opening new Luckin stores, he's also opening 10 of his own brand stores. I asked him what he thought about conflict of interest. He said, there is so much room in the market, it won't even have a small impact. But back to Jieyang. I was with the same people as last time, and we ordered one of those New Year's Year of the Tiger drinks, as well as a coconut latte. I'm getting kind of annoyed with Luckin doing this thing where they show whipped cream in the picture, and then when you go to order, the only option is no whipped cream. Whipped cream is not just for aesthetic. If I'm going to be getting a candy drink, I want my whipped cream. The consensus amongst everyone who tried both drinks was, it's too sweet. I find that kind of funny considering Luckin is like 50% as sweet as Starbucks drinks, and people seem to have no problem going to Starbucks. It was pretty sweet though. Typical candy drink, nothing unexpected. Oh, and one thing I love about this area of China, people stay up late. I don't know if it's just their nature or if it's because everyone owns their own business, but nothing closes early. This Luckin stays open until 11 p.m. on weekdays and weekends. Wait, it's the same hours every day. Why not just nine to 11 daily? Something I found rather funny was the mall itself was crowded, but individual stores had very few people in them. Everyone just seemed to be waiting for a place to eat, which meant the mall was filled with these incredibly obnoxious female robot voices saying, C45, please come eat. C45, please come eat. C45, please come eat. C45, I get it, shut up. I honestly can't figure out why I'm the only one who seems to get super annoyed by this. Anyway, while walking through the mall with my Luckin, I came across this maternal and child chain. Or should I say maternal and child? Seriously? How do you even make that mistake? I had to post it on my Instagram. That's almost as bad as the inspiration for this Instagram in the first place. The Spedule Cigarette Store. Anyway, again, that's all I really have to say about that. I still find myself on the daily being like, hmm, maybe I should buy more Luckin stock today. I know it's dangerous to feel this way, but more and more, I really just feel like it's a sure thing. It has everything necessary for a successful business in China. Name brand recognition, constantly changing up the drinks and keeping it fresh. It's a homegrown brand. It can be successful even in a traditional area of the country. And they've paid their debt and are back on the rise. I feel like pretty soon we're gonna get that Bloomberg article saying, Luckin is back from the dead. Will they fail again to get China into coffee? Calling it now. That's gonna be what they say. Oh, and one more thing. I gotta give a genuine shout out as much as I hate using that word, because it feels overused and cliche at this point. But I gotta say something. When I started a Patreon, I kind of in the back of my head had the feeling that nobody would actually sign up and volunteer to donate to me making videos. I was really surprised to find that people actually genuinely feel like my content is worth donating to. So I wanna give a sincere, as best as I can without sounding cliche, thank you, to Bobby, Joshua Eli Gassette, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that name correctly. Mark Proctor and Faux Pa, who is actually a good friend of mine, used to live in China, and I wish would come back. Seriously, thanks guys so much. Really appreciate it. And speaking of Patreon, I decided to open a Luckin' Coffee tier. I know there are a few people who just want more Luckin' Coffee content. So those of you who specifically sign up for this Luck in China tier, I will be posting Luckin-specific content 
just to the people in this tier. For the price of a single coffee a month, you get basically unlimited luck and coffee content. I mean, what could be better than that?